Greetings and welcome to Temple Baptist Church in Poplar Bluff, Missouri. If we know that the Lord is life, and without the Lord there is nothing but death, we're talking not only abundant life here on this earth, oh how good God is to us who follow Him. He provides for us. He provides tangible things. He provides um, grace in our lives, the most important thing. He, he provides eternal life for us as well. And so if there was something that the Lord hated, it would seem to me that we would want to be as far away from that as we possibly could. We've been talking about in, in Proverbs chapter 6, these things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to Him. A proud look, a lying tongue, we've talked about those, and today, hands that shed innocent blood. Hands that shed innocent blood. God hates the ending of a life that He has created by human hands. The, the idea of murder, in fact, in, it is the sixth commandment of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not murder. The ending of life should never come at the hands of humanity. God gave life and only God should be able to have control over that life from beginning to end and into eternity. And so the Bible says, the Lord hates hands that shed innocent blood. In Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7, listen to what the Bible says, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and he became a living soul. You see, the picture of that is God creates the, the shell of a human being. He creates it out of the earth of the ground, the dust of the ground, and it was just there. It looked like humanity, but it didn't move. It didn't breathe. And then the Lord, the Bible says, breathe the breath of life into that nostril of that form, and then man became a living being. And so this is the reason that life is so sacred to God. He gave that life. He was the one who begins life. And so the idea of hands that shed innocent blood, it's talking about murder. Now, my question is, who could be more innocent than an unborn baby in the womb? What innocence there is. And I've been amazed. My daughter recently had a baby, and over the course of time from very, very early in the pregnancy, uh, we were able to see the brain. We were able to see uh, all of the uh, outward features of that child. You could see the lungs developing a little later, uh, the heart beat uh, very early on. You could see the image of the heart. And the idea that that baby is not real is just absolutely as false as it could be. And what is there that is more innocent than a child? and especially a child in the womb, but any child. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4, Jeremiah says, Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb. You see, that which is formed in the womb is formed by God. It is a creation of God. It is not a creation of that father. It is not even a creation of that mother. They don't have the right of life and death over that child. And so the Lord says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. Before you even formed in the womb, God says, I knew you. I had a plan for you. He says, I ordained you a prophet to the nations before I even formed you in the womb. And so that's the reason that life is so sacred to God. It's His life that He extended, that He gifted, that He gave and the Lord hates the hands that shed innocent blood. Throughout the course of time, uh, the Word of God has been very clear about life. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, listen to what the Bible says. The Lord says there, See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil in that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in His ways, and to keep His commandments, His statutes, and His judgments, that you may live and multiply, 
And the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go to possess. But if your heart turns away so that you do not hear and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I announce to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not prolong your days in the land which you cross over the Jordan to go in and possess. Then listen to what he says. I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, God says, that both you and your descendants may live. There was an idol uh, back in the day that the Lord shares with us in the Old Testament. And the reason he said, I've set before you life and death, blessing, which goes along with life, death, which goes, a cursing, which goes along with death, if you choose death. And the reason he said that was there was a, a, an idol called Molech. He was a god, little g-o-d, a false idol, had no power, had no life. But out in the world around uh, the Israelites, there were people who served this false god. And one of the things that they thought this false god required of them, that they might be made right in his eyes and have good things happen, they would literally sacrifice the lives of their children. They would burn them in the fires of Molech, the Bible tells us. And God says that is an abomination. We may, in what we do in America today, not call it uh, sacrificing our unborn children or children to a false god, but yet it really is the god of convenience, the god of immoral acts which brings about sometimes a life that we did not expect, that we did not want, but God is the source of that life. And so let me encourage you with these words, the Lord hates the hands that shed innocent blood And the Lord puts before us life and death. And then he's very clear, choose life. Choose life. And oh, how God will bless when as a country we choose life. Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for being open with us about our actions and the consequences of our actions. And Lord, if we choose life, then, Lord, there's going to be good. But if we choose death, there's going to be cursing. And so, Father, we're seeing that all about us. And, Lord, help us to turn back to you and help us to consider life, all life, just as sacred as you do. Lord, help us to repent of that sin as a nation and help us to turn back to you to see the value, the sanctity in every human life, so that we may know the blessing that you will shed upon our land. Help us to turn towards you, Father, and we'll ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I pray that you'll have a great day in the Lord.